tell me. I hear you. Is it you? Is it you? I hear you. In the dream, I was in an apartment building, and there was a guy doing a web show, and it keeps getting worse and worse into sexual stuff, pushing the envelope. And I'm, I'm there, and, uh, and finally I just realize it's just going, it's such perversity that I get up and I just leave. It's just awful. So when I do, I go out into the hall, and there's others out there running around too. So we all get outside, and I'm outside of this structure, and there's someone saying that there were hurricane winds, but they weren't there yet. And I realize after the fact, realizing the dream that they were a prophet, they were speaking of what's coming. But then pretty soon there was the, there was a mist. Somehow I knew there was a shore or something, but. Uh, I see a big wave coming. And so um, then I, I guess I run home. And so when I'm running home, I'm outside with my youngest son, and it's like we're doing chores around the farm, and we're trying to shore things up and get things hunkered down. And so uh, I look around, and I see it's, it's starting to get real dark and the wind is really picking up and then wouldn't it figure because if you've seen some of my other videos uh, you know I have these dreams where I'll see bundled twisters and I saw them again uh, just about in every direction I see you know it almost reminds you of Medusa's head you know there's these bundles of, of tornadoes so uh, as we run to the front porch, it's like there's one forming right there on the porch, but it's really strange. It's like sheets of um, like plastic almost, but it's ghosty. And they're like grayish and there's stuff on them. And I don't know if it's like, like it would remind you of TV gray screen or something but anyhow I noticed in the dream there's a smell and I don't upon waking I don't know what the smell was but it seemed like it was burnt and something but I just know that it's like witchcraft or something and so I I get in the house and here that that thing is it's like right in the porch and it's like coming in the house I start commanding void in the name of Jesus you know calling it all down void and I'm, I'm attacking this thing and a guy with blonde hair no offense to blondes uh, he comes in and uh, he acts like it was invited and I don't know maybe he invited it the whole blonde thing is kind of like an innocence thing maybe perhaps but I yell at him. I said, why did you go and invite the dog of Satan into my house? And then I immediately wake up. And when I do, I look up and there's the ceiling fan. And the light isn't on, but it there's a s slight sound coming from it. And I, it almost sounds like there's a mouse um, there or something. So I get up. And I go to turn the light on, and the light won't turn on. It's like it burned out or something. So maybe that's why it was doing it. It's one of those fluorescent type of, of bulbs. The light's out. And I'm like, wow, this is more, you know. And I hadn't been asleep for, you know, maybe a couple hours, but I came right out, and I wrote, wrote everything down, and I started researching it right away. And in some of the media that I was reading, you know, some people are saying, oh, the synagogue of Satan is Illuminati, New World Order, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going that route. Um, but somebody else was writing some stuff, and it says, um, you know, it's in the context of the scribes and the Pharisees. Um, 
Um, it says in John 8, 3, the scribes and Pharisees had brought a woman to Jesus who had supposedly been caught in adultery. And you know the story. Um, he is that without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. And of course they left. And Jesus told the woman that he did not condemn her. Go and sin no more. And it sets up the real meat of chapter 8, which is the synagogue of Satan. So they go on to say that um, in John 8, 12, it says, uh, Jesus spoke again to them, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. When I read that part, I'm like, bing, because the light was burnt out. Yeah, that was like, I was like, wow, because that was weird. So I took some serious note of that. But if you look up the synagogue of Satan in the scriptures, it is in Revelations 2.9 and Revelations 3.9. Okay, and so, of course, I'm like, okay, 9 is something serious here. Um, 9 speaks of end, of harvest, of fulfillment, you know, the number 9. In the scriptures what's the context of revelations 2 9 it is the verse written to the church at Smyrna okay and this is interesting in other end time you know like Revelations 12, it talks about the woman. And the woman gets taken off to a place of safety, and the flood helps her, and she's kind of protected. And then Satan goes after the remainder of her seed. And it's kind of like there are two groupings. One grouping is for martyrdom and persecution. Uh, the other one is a little more protected. <laughs> and so I couldn't help but notice this because in Revelations 3 9, the context is the Church of Philadelphia. And both of these are the both of these churches are saved, are you know, they make it. It says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. They sound like overcomers to me because they have authority. Big deal here, people, big deal. Do a little research on them and you'll see, you know, in Revelation 12, where it talks about the woman and then, you know, and then this, it's the same sort of thing. What group are you in? <laughs> Maybe, maybe we, we don't choose or whatever, but I like to say that perhaps the Church of Philadelphia is the ones that understand the spiritual warfare, understand what's going on, and, and, have, and you exercise the authority that Jesus has given us. Is that too bold of me to say? Is it? Well, we'll see. <laughs> but anyhow... Um, Exciting stuff. Um, so yeah, Smyrna and Philadelphia, um, which Jesus found no fault, um, that they knew about the synagogue of Satan and they didn't follow after it. And with Philadelphia, there's a lot of reference to the key of David. Um, what he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. That's just authority. Using the authority of Jesus. That, that's exciting. After I, I um, woke up and I started researching and having this kind of stuff, I, I had been attacked by the synagogue of Satan earlier in the week. And it's scary because they go and they get other people. And other people start attacking too. The synagogue of Satan is compromised of those who profess to be something they are not. They are also liars. Uh, they teach false doctrine or hinder. Um, that, that's what I encountered a lot, was trying to hinder people from overcoming, uh, from more. Like everybody else is dealing with this too, okay? 
So that's what, you know, um, that kind of condemnation that they're heaping on people is, is putting out all those burning wicks. It's, it's horrible. So in, encourage a new believer today. Please do. The wave that's coming in now is, is definitely dealing with the synagogue of Satan thing. So the dream I just shared with you, I had uh, shared um, with a Stickum group. I'm taking ex excerpts from that, but now the Lord has given me more to build from. Um, and I had a disturbing dream last night. And in the dream was a lot of devastation. Again, grouped twisters. Um, I saw cars on fire. I even saw the truck that we drive on fire. If you know anything about uh, dreams and dream interpretation, a uh, vehicle is a big deal. It's like your ministry. So uh, with the synagogue of Satan stuff, it's continued. I continue to get attacks and whatnot. And I know many of you are out there getting attacked. If these twisted people that are believing that they are working for the Lord, but they're not having the fruits. Now what is a way to root out the synagogue of Satan? Um, do, do they exhort, encourage, edify, and are teachable? Seek to truly learn. Or... Are what they doing an agenda to tear down, disqualify believers, or hinder based on some agenda? Understand what did Judas do? Judas was right alongside Jesus the whole entire time, clear up to the end. And he was deceived in his mind because he had guile. Guile is ulterior motive, putting Jesus in a box, uh, pushing a doctrine or whatever. That's what the synagogue of Satan is about. Now those two churches, Smyrna and Philadelphia, they're both getting railed by it. But one gets chewed up, spit out, and the other one puts the synagogue of Satan to shame. How do we put them to shame? By standing firm, using authority. When we give messages, when we reply, we're taking everything captive unto the obedience of Jesus Christ because we're not allowing our flesh to jump out and let any wounding speak or anything that the enemy has a hook with speak. We allow the Holy Spirit to take hold of us and to come out so that when we we engage with such because they're going to come uh, we are allowing the Holy Spirit to do the speaking and the Holy Spirit if we do it the right way by taking authority and the Holy Spirit will put them to shame so uh, and one last note I want to put on here is that at the end of the dream, I was talking with my husband. He was being very firm. And he was saying that it's in the natural, too, because I was saying it's in the spirit. He was saying it's in the natural, too. So pay attention there. It is a spiritual thing and in the natural, too. When it manifests in the natural, how are we behaving? How are we acting? How are we uh, destroying? So be very, very careful. Come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we submit ourselves to you. We just ask for your hand upon us and for obedience. We submit ourselves in obedience, Lord God. We get on the floor and we ask, Lord, Lord, is there a place in us that the enemy can hook to when the synagogue of Satan comes to attack us? Lord Jesus, show us, call us for purification so that our vehicles will not be wrecked. That our ministry and bearing you to others will not be wrecked. 
Bro bera sukene bera sukene bera kere bara kuli. Bro bera sukene bera tukere bara bara sukere bara. Guard us, Lord Jesus, by your Holy Spirit. Help us to stand tall in these days. Bro shikene bara tukene bara kere bro bakene bara bam bro se bara sukene bara fuli bara bara. Thank you. Go forth and uh, stand firm and use and exercise your authority that Jesus has given you. Believe it. The greater works are coming forth from that for the ones that not only believe the word but really exercise it. Mm -hmm.